I've been keeping up with the, a little bit of anime. I'm going to uh, get back into the groove of watching the anime, actually. But I have enjoyed myself a, a more recent one. Was that this week or was that last week? I think that was this week. I did a lot of shit. This week went by like nothing. And it's been hot, though. That's all I remember. But anyway, first thing I remember is I'm still watching uh, Isekai oji song, which I uh, updated y'all on last week. And the latest episode was basically, they were, excuse me, they were still making money off of the online content of him using his powers or whatever, but um, something happened where money was slowing up for them, and he decided to uh, stop doing online eBay auctions, because in the previous episode, he was going crazy over Sega paraphernalia he was like you know said oh i want to order this uh sega limited edition blah 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 you know or just get some old technology i mean bought a flip phone and everything you know so it's it's, it's basically very quaint in how it wields its let me see weaves is a better word actually to end up starting with a w weaves its story from one plot point to the next it's all simple things so it's kind of like it's a little bit of slice of life flavor in there too but um, it's got good comedy as well. And the latest episode added a new character, a girl from the main character's past. So apparently she has a crush on him and he also likes her, but they're not letting on to one another. And you have uh, his uncle basically just cutting through all the tension and just saying, oh, well, you, you like my nephew. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's pretty quaint. I like it. It's very funny. So yeah, it's got beats of comedy, and I think there's gonna be some good action scenes later on. I, I can see them building up to that. It might be something interesting along those lines, but yeah, it's been good so far. Now another thing that I also had to um, let me see what was that last week or this week? I don't recall if I told y'all about Tomodachi Game, but uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of detail. Basically, the Tomodachi Game. I've watched every episode that's available thus far. Um, I guess that's the first season that they're ready to the show. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're working on the next season, making it a series. But um, yes, Tomodachi Game is um, incredibly interesting. If you liked any of the animes, that's like, uh, what's his name? With Conan. Uh, it's, it's something detective, I forget. But, um, uh, what was the name of that anime? I can't believe, I can't believe I forgot. Somebody gonna tell you. One of y'all, please let me know. But, um, it's, uh, it was a, it was a kid, but he wasn't a kid. He was a, he was actually like a, a an adult, young adult male who used to solve crimes and shit, like a, like a cop or whatever. And some serum or something turned him into a kid. So now he's stuck being a kid and he's still solving crimes, but he's using like, little tricks like you know it's it's really good it's a really good series i loved uh conan conan is something detective i can't remember what it's called or, ah, whatever anyway it was good and if you like anything along those lines you know what I'm saying mystery and whatnot well it they took a bit of that and mixed it with like some you know can you trust your friend squid game saw type of thing because the whole premise is that these um, people, or kids, I guess you could say, were kidnapped and forced to play this game because someone among them is full of debt. So they signed them up to play the game, and if he trusts his friends and friendships strong enough, they can work together, beat the game, and have their debt alleviated. But um, you can also betray one another and leave one person with all the debt or spread the debt out amongst everybody, et cetera, et cetera, as you play the games, you know. So it's it's very in depth. I can't explain everything right here, but basically think of it like this: it's Squid Game, but instead of just winning money, it's to get out of debt. <laughs> so yeah, and um, super clever, very 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 well written, and you're gonna like it. People, you know, turn on one another. Uh, you think their friendships are strong. This, then the third. People keep secrets, secret vendettas secret hate it's it's good and 
very heady. It's 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 very thoughtful, but it's fun to watch it and see how did they figure it out and what did they do. So they only reveal it like way later, and it's good like that. But anyway, yeah, Tomodachi game. That's a good ass anime. I, I really like the complexity, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I like my brain like to chew on shit. Like that. Yeah. But anyway. This week, what we played was um, a horror game called Project Nightmares. And Project Nightmares, man, let me tell you something. What's it called? Uh, Case 36. That game is hella good on the creepy aspect and its layout and whatnot. And it may be kind of basic at some parts. But at least it's it's good at setting the atmosphere and scaring the player. Like literally throwing you off your rocket. It is good at that. So I takes my time. And honestly, bruh. I'm 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 I'm, I'm I'm I think I like it. It's not perfect, but it's designed to have gameplay elements to actually focus on and I like that. It's designed pretty well. I might add. Given that other games on the indie um, level that it's competing with, I can't see many other horror games that have this simplistic yet decent feedback loop. The biggest gripe that I give it, the biggest gripe is that um, navigating the area in the middle can become incredibly tedious, especially when the old lady that's chasing you is roaming around at random and you need to go somewhere. Now, the premise is that you are a part of this facility or working with these people in a facility. And they have a machine that can scan the energy on paranormal objects and send the person into that world or whatnot while you are inside a sensory deprivation chamber or whatever, you know? And you go into this world of this old, rotty, burnt, and waterlogged doll. And suddenly you're walking around in these hallways that look like a house, but it's never in the hallways with just disjointed rooms that, that aren't laid out by any type of human logic, you know, in its design. So, um, uh, basically, as you walk around, you start hearing voices, you start hearing things being thrown at you, pots, pans, books, and just the occasional scares that always pretty well timed. And at times, you'll come across something like a locked door with certain symbols on them, or a little, you know, diaries to read and find out what happened. And the strangest thing about it all is the the strangest thing about this game is that you have a source of light with a candle. And this candle, the person holds in their hand. They don't have like a candle holder or anything. And of course, as it melts, he tilts it over and pours out the wax. If you run for too long, the candle goes out. If the candle goes out and you're in the dark, then there's something that's dwelling in those hallways that can come for you and kill you. And the candle is supposed to be, because it's a default white candle, it's supposed to dispel dark spirit, energy, or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's actually pretty intuitive and, and, and mechanical, even for the game, because the way it operates is, as the candle runs out, you'll see the animation of the character just push the candle up, you know, as it's burning. And when it does go out, he can hold up to two extra candles. So he can just switch to, you know, the flame over to the other. Now, when you do run too long and it does go out, <coughs> in certain places there are candles 
lit that cannot go out that are in the walls or on tables. And you got to relight the candle that way. Now, I like how this is set up because it's still derivative of Amnesia, The Dark Descent with The Lantern, which, you know, that popularized so much, and the countless other horror games that require batteries and a flashlight. But this was actually not only different, but it was also intuitive because it, in, it implements RPG in, in a closed space as you explore the areas. Because remember I was talking about the center where there's an old witch following you? Well, the center is, each section of the entire map is blocked off by a trail of salt. And it makes a barrier where the witch cannot cross. You have to jump through those barriers and get back to where you were going. So say, think of north, south, east, west, and the entire map is made like a square. Then, you know, each section to the south, outside of the box, is closed off by this salt wall. So yeah, it's a salt, it's basically a big salt circle is what they're saying. And you have to explore through there and safely get around. And sometimes they'll just, they'll just fuck with you because you'll just be walking and one of the boards would randomly creak. And when the board creaks, she just come gunning at you. So it's, it's, it's some shit, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, um, still, I say it was pretty good. I enjoyed myself. And you can hold one charge of salt. You can pick up some salt. And if she chases you, you have to turn around and look at her in time to see her coming. And then you can throw the salt in her face and then she start bitching you. Ah, and you can run off. But yeah, the game's not bad. I think I might actually finish it. I just got a little stuck. I couldn't navigate, but I, I kind of want to see the end of that game. So yeah, I think we're going to get back on that Tuesday. Yeah. Other than that, um, new Apex season dropped, y'all. Um, it's anime season, you feel me? Um, I've completed the current battle pass, which dropped, what, last month? Or was it month before? It was last month. But, no, that was, that was month before, I think. But either way, yeah, battle pass complete. Uh, waiting for the next one. And I got to be honest, man. I'm addicted to Apex. I'm insanely good. Like, I, I can't get enough. And can't nobody, I, like, I, I love that game. <laughs> and I cannot wait for Overwatch 2. Let me tell you, it's going to be wild, bro. It's going to feel like 2015. Ooh. Anyway. All right, listen. I don't see, like, here's, here's the thing about this week. Like I said, it's still the summer. So the news for gaming ain't that great right now. Uh, it's kind of boring, to be honest with you. A bunch of stuff for Activision Blizzard still going on. You got so much. It's it's and and just Naughty Dog and The Last of Us again. The only, the only thing that I can bring up is the fact that Stray came out, Loop Mancer released, and Live Alive. Or live a live or live a live or is it live a live? Whatever it is, is out. <laughs> and I might check it out actually because I was told that it's pretty good. But anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't know, really see nothing worth talking about in the news. You know what I'm saying? The Resident Evil Gold Edition, Mercenaries trailer, but yeah, I don't know. But either way, um, we touched quite a few uh, things on the stream, actually. We actually played uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was a indie Souls clone type game, which is like a, it's it's like a 3D shoot 'em up with Dark Souls combat. And you could just move around and uh, think like Returnal. The bosses shoot, you know, orbs and beams everywhere and you just gotta like dodge them and keep attacking. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, but, um, another thing that we did touch for the majority of the week was multiverses. I'm going to talk about multiverses in detail, so get ready. Now, multiverses, we got in on the beta, 
and I'm running drops on my channel whenever we do play as, as long as it's better as uh, active I actually forget the date but I've been having so much fun mostly because I really love Smash Bros and grew up with it but I've been having so much fun with multiverses I've been tearing ass up do you understand me I love that game no matter how fucking annoying it may be I love it 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 it's good it's good it's good it's good it's good I I want I have to have that game I can't get enough of it I I'm addicted okay I'm a Batman main I've been venturing out to other characters but I literally have a Batman that's like level 18 and majority of my time on it has been playing him. Um, he's not bad. I got a Garnet at like level 8, but uh, I prefer the Bat. It's just so good. His moveset works oh so well. I've had problems with Tasmanian Devils spamming their tornado attacks but i have mastered how to defeat that with a simple down attack easy i can glide right into the attack and it always takes priority it's just that good and the iron giant Ooh. the iron giant listen People decided that it's a good idea to spam his down special, it looks like. Cool. You do that if you want to. I found a way to beat it too. My Batman can't be stopped. He's ridiculous. And I really would love to have a good multiverses partner that would be so I mean good good it I hey I'm taking fucking I'm I'm taking applications and there will be an interview and an entire what I need to see I want to know I want to see you get good this shit is my shit and I'm not taking no L's in multiverses or any smash unless it's deserved son A game do you understand I... oh I'm I'm over I'm overwhelmed with a spirit come with the shit don't play hey no baddies no fuck ups. You. This. I, don't. I, hey. Hey. I'm not playing. Alright. It was so hard to find words. I wanted to cuss like 50 times just now, man. But I'm not playing. That, that Smash Brothers get serious, bro. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Alright, alright. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Multiverses is good. So anyway, you got Batman. His neutral attack is a big old forward double, I think, or something like that. Double fist forward or something like that. But I know his uh, combo at forward and forward normal attack is very good. It's like a three hit combo, of course, like most of them. And the last one is a bit of an uppercut, so it launches the character a little bit. I love to follow up with either a upward upward normal attack upward attack or up attack i want to call it an up a but it's not up a so anyway um i want to i like to follow up with an up a or an up special which is the up a is a overhead swing backhand swing while his up special is an uppercut that uppercut is so good it is amazing I've abused that uppercut to knock people off the stage many a times. 
and they hate me for it. Okay, and not to mention, he has a down normal attack, which, like I said earlier, was that slide. It's a sliding kick that moves him forward. And it's very good to counter Taz because it takes priority. Uh, Taz is weak on the low attacks whenever he's in his tornado. And this is perfect for Batman to get in. Another way for him to get in, though, is he has his neutral special, which is the Batarang. Now, you toss that Batarang, depending on how long you charge it, how far it goes. And if you have the character-specific perk, if your Batarang hits somebody on its way back, then it automatically applies maximum stats of Weaken on that character, which is five stats. Now, Weaken, I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I love putting it on people because it scares them and make them run around. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I like to, um, my specialty is spiking bitches. <laughs> I love to spike me a bitch right off the edge. You don't even know what happened. It's good, it's fun. Now, if you could show me Oh man, another thing I love to do, especially to the Iron Giant, is his, let's let's talk about his aerials. So his aerial up attack, well no, 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 I was talking about his specials, my bad. His down special is the smoke bomb, of course. Neutral special is pulling out a b remote time bomb. And forward special is the battering, excuse me. So yeah, now when you deploy this bomb, the next hit, attaches the bomb to the enemy but you can also throw a batarang and it would attach the bomb to the batarang which will then hit the enemy and attach the bomb to the person so that also is an option and it feels really good to put a bomb on a batarang toss it and then it hits somebody on the way back with maximum stacks and you right there after the hit from the batarang and just boom 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 you know it's it's so delicious but um yeah now one of the best things you can do you take a charged aerial attack like the forward forward normal in the air forward air that's going to give you a strong ass kick like it's actually pretty good i like to use it to juggle people in order to take them off the screen on the left or the right screen but uh you know depending on how they retaliate you can either respond with an uppercut or his spike his uh, down air normal which is a super good axe kick that hurts it fucking hurts bro you use that on somebody while they on the ground and they over 100 maybe 120 hp may or percentage whatever yeah it's it's stupid it's it's a good good attack but um yeah man it's the batman has a really good kick his um upward air is a two hit overhead by the way and it also applies weaken one stack of weaken when you do so as well as it does on the ground and the smoke bomb the last thing i wanted to explain now if you do your down special he puts down the smoke in that area of smoke it slows down enemies and every hit that you do applies weaken status effect on the enemy so that being said, you could be inside the smoke and throw your batarang and it will hit for an, I think an extra stack. I think it does an extra stack of a uh, weaken. And if you put the bomb on the batarang while standing in the smoke and hit somebody with it, then I think that will total to three when the bomb goes off because it also applies to the bomb. So it's a lot of technical shit with Batman that you can do. And that's what I love, bro. He's fucking technical, boy. That's that's my shit. I love it. So yeah, Batman, best character, love him. I think he's S tier. Um, there's a lot of people who disagree. Harley Quinn is actually super stupid good. Um, I've seen some good Jake the dog, of course. He has a Kirby set, and he actually works pretty well. You have Shaggy, who is ridiculous. He's just Captain Falcon with a bit of extra power a little too much maybe because the armor on that damn falcon kick is annoying but anyway um Arya stark is a character that i just uh, purchased and i wanted to see how she works and she's not bad 
you actually have to be meticulous in your attacks and your behaviors and you know choose the moment to do everything you gotta feel it out and it's not bad I, I like it I, I'll need to practice with her a little more though but they classify her as an expert class character so maybe I can handle it I don't we, we'll see but yeah now of course everybody's been spamming the Iron Giant because he has this huge hitbox but so does the hitbox on his attacks and he literally can dominate an entire quadrant of the whole map effortlessly if you play him right and it's annoying but luckily I haven't seen many good players on Iron Giant they turn out to be bumbling buffoons most of the time and I juggle the shit out of them because they so big you can just do whatever to them they don't know what to do it's hilarious so yeah Old Iron Giant is kind of like the Bowser of the group, you know what I mean? Heavy type, big powerful hits, but you know, and multi-hit attacks. He's ridiculous, really. But if you learn how to deal with him, you can deal with him. I love multiverses, man. Steven Universe is a character that I wanted to learn, too, because it's something weird about his kid. It's like he spawns a clone to fight you, and then... He can just set his shield in the middle of the whole fucking place. So it bounces anything off of it and attacks the person who attacked it. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. But anyway, yeah. He's basically using Aegis Reflectors. Oh my god, that's what it is! Anyway. <laughs> um, and after Steven... Uh, who I wanted to mention... The, the one person that I want to play because they seem underwhelming is Bugs Bunny. I feel like his kit ain't enough. I hadn't seen a Bugs Bunny really just kick my ass. I've seen some good Vilmas though. I've seen some good Vilmas. Um, okay, so. <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, it, it's okay. F Finn? Jake is amazing. Finn is ridiculous, all right? His range with that sword is so stupid. He outranges me every time as Batman, so I, I hate fighting him most of the time. And he's basically just like Link, but a little different. And he's like, he, he, it's, it's, his hits hurt, bro. I just don't get it. The boy is ridiculously good, but, um, People tend to spin, they, they, they spam their spin move with him. And it's incredibly annoying. It's so, so, so annoying. Oh my God. But, um, I, I, he got this like mechanic where he could like go into a shop. Every time he beat up people, he gain coins and he go into a shop and buy gear that levels him up and makes him like faster or like, you know, do different things better. I think it's a bu a attack buff, some other stuff. I gotta fool around with him to find out for real. But anyway, uh, Garnet is different. She does not have much range since she's uh you know fist to cuffs, but her attacks have a lot of utility to them, and she can apply shock status effects to enemies while also buffing her teammates with music. And it's dope. I actually like playing her. And she can be a very, very strong force to be reckoned with when she's on the ground. So, best bet when fighting against her is to take the fight to the air and hope that you do well. Batman prevails in both. Anyway, Harley Quinn's just broken, but super good. Iron Giant, I told you he's broken. Jake, broken. And of course, Rain Dog. Rain Dog is a purely support character um, made to like, she has like this tether thing where she can like pull the teammate back to her position. If the teammate's about to get knocked out, uh, it will be canceled. So that's pretty good. Other than that, it takes somebody with an insane amount of skill or just the right amount to play that character. Otherwise, most people who are used to playing other more offensive characters won't gel well with it unless they can adapt. Anywho's, 
Superman sucks. <laughs> like literally, I hadn't seen many good Superman, but um, I've seen a few. Um, we've talked about Taz being broken. All of his moves are kind of hard to predict because he's very cartoony in his frame animation, but he can be good if he's in the right hands. But in the wrong hands, he can become good for the wrong reasons. Tom and Jerry is annoying, and they work like the ice climbers, and Jerry is kind of small, so it's hard to keep up with where Jerry is. We might need an indicator of some sort to float over his head to make it very visible. Otherwise, he's going to be annoying. But uh, I've, I've learned to adapt, and uh, I haven't come across any insanely good ones. A few, but not many. I might try them myself. Yeah, I'm switching. And lastly, from the available ones in the base game, uh, Wonder Woman. She don't feel that great to fight with. I guess I'd need to learn her more. I'm not sure, but so far she sucks. Anyways, <laughs> um, there's some DLC characters going to be LeBron from Fortnite and uh, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty will be separate characters, of course. And uh, yeah, that's what's supposed to be on the horizon. And yeah, it's a good ass game. <clears throat> I love it. Super fun, it's simple, it's intuitive, and everybody can play. But not everybody can get good. But anywho, yeah, that's your boy. That's everything that I can tell you on that one. Um, I think I've been talking long enough. I'll give y'all about a good 30 minutes, you know, pod this this week. Boy, I had, I had to delete the ugliest laugh I ever... Y'all don't understand the laugh that I just loafed. The laugh that I leafed? The laugh that I done laughed at. One of them that I just had, and boy, it was, it was, it was one of my ugly laughs, boy. I don't, I don't like my ugly laugh. Anyway, anyway, y'all be easy. Love, peace, hair, grease. Hug your nephew, love your niece. And y'all already know the channel motto is the intentions are the most important. Actions ain't nothing but loud, and words don't mean a damn thing. I need y'all to take care of yourselves. And. Peace. Hmm. Seems to be a symbol with a key inside, but it looks it looks real. What, what the hell? What? What the hell was that? Bro. No! 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 No oh, shit! Um Wait, what? What happened? I can't even see behind me because this nigga was changing fucking candles and shit. I try to fucking play with his hands. I don't know what's behind me. 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 My oh, lord, is this man holding bananas? Go oh, fuck! Hey, no way! That <laughs> Oh my god. Bruh, I get jump scared by a